Oh yeah. Gotta have a little bit of coffee. How are we all doing today, folks? Welcome to The Candle Enthusiast. I am your host, Shane Carlson. And today I'm going live. I'm going live uh, based on a request. A request that I've been getting for a, a while. Uh, the, the fall preview Yankee Candles for 2019 came out on Memorial Day weekend. And when I did not post my, my normal edited typical video that I would. I got a lot of questions from you folks. So uh, I have been, as some of you know, on a hiatus, but I thought today uh, would do something a little bit different. I'm not going to give you an edited video. I'm not going to uh, put uh, fancy music and uh, a lot of different camera angles and shots. Uh, I'm going to smell these candles, these brand new 2019 Yankee Candle Farmer's Market Collection candles for the first time. I swear to you, we're going to have to go on the honor system here. I have never smelled these candles. I, they're still in my Yankee Candle bag here. Uh, I have them, all the, the scents, in uh, different formats so I can cross-reference them. And this, this way, in real time, you can see uh, my process of how I evaluate these candles. Uh, usually before I do a video, I'll give them a quick sniff and I'll take my notes. And uh, the reason why I edit my videos is because sometimes it takes me 10, sometimes more, uh, 10 minutes or more to, to evaluate and say what I really want to say about the candles. But I'm going to try to expedite it as much as I can today, show you a little bit of my process of the evaluation, uh, and if it goes well, and uh, I hopefully I will, I will produce an edited video of uh, these fragrances for those of you who don't want to sit around and watch me smell them and take my notes and discover this the fragrances for the first time. But this is the first time I've done something like this. I've done kind of on the fly evaluations, but. Um, Never with uh, something like this, with the Yankee Candles. I want to jump right into this. We are live so I can see your comments. Thank you for joining in. But I really want to move fast. I want to get through these. Oh, wow. Look at all you guys. I want to get through uh, um, these as fast as I can. For those of you who may be new to the channel and are not used to these live streams. So let's not waste any more time. 2019 Yankee Candle Fall Preview Farmer's Market Collection, right? I got them all. I, well, I'm sure there'll be one or two more that they'll surprise on us. Let's jump right into it. I got my Yankee Candle bag right here uh, with all of the house warmer jars. House warmer jars is usually the way... Um, uh, I like to evaluate the candles. There's a lot. I'm not sure how many we're going to be talking about today. Well, let's do this. And again, I'll I got my notebook here. I'll show you what I normally do. First one, Cider House. Probably, I don't know if this is the most popular, the most talked about, but uh, to me, this is certainly the most intriguing i think this is uh you know we we had the classic apple cider scent we always have some kind of take on an apple cider honey crisp apple cider a couple years ago um but um and then poached pear flambe last year i felt was kind of i mean a flambe is anything but apple cider but i felt like it had that spicy, fruity, autumn beverage quality. Let's jump into this. Am I nervous? No, I'm not nervous. Um, I'm going to pull up this so I can see what I'm actually doing. Um, and light. See, I'm learning from my mistakes. Woo, that is way too bright. And where's that label? Where's that label? I have a reversed image here. Uh, so 
bear with me. We have a cider house, farmer's house, or farmer's market collection. I need to drink more coffee to get into this. Uh, a basket full of apples on a wooden table, a little bit of a soft focus there. I actually don't have this in any other format other than a votive. And when I do my edited video, I'm going to be using uh, uh, my aroma prison method. If you don't know what that is, just type in in this Google or the YouTube search, candle enthusiast aroma prison cider house. FYI, not only did I not smell these, um, I did not read the fragrance notes. Again, we're going to have to go in the honor system here. That's just the way it works. Um, okay, so this is what I would do normally is uh, whether I'm evaluating a glass of wine or a candle, in my mind, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to break up the categories. Uh, uh, first thing with a, a candle like this is you're going to focus on the fruit. And I was hoping, expecting for uh, uh, that oxidized, maybe even slightly fermented hard cider very distinct apple smell and instead I'm smelling um, more of a fresh apple which is not bad I mean the smell of a fresh apple is nice but it is surprisingly not intense at all and uh, I usually mention apple skins um, and uh, even sometimes the woodiness of the, the little, little stem on top of the apple. And I'm going to actually, my mind's going to that because there, the, there's all the, the wood, the wood component of this candle is coming through just as much as the apple is, which makes sense because if I look at this label, we do have, it looks like uh, an oak basket uh, with burlap and apples. I'm going to hit this with a little bit of heat. You guys may have seen me do this before. Uh, because this is paraffin and I have some of the wax melts for some of the others, which will be a little bit easier to smell. I'm just, I'm not going to burn the wax. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of heat. This, what this will do is just release a little bit of the fragrance oil from the wax. Uh, woodiness, I, I definitely get, uh, you know, the, the branches when you prune the apple trees, uh, the bark, uh, the, the dryness of everything decaying on the forest floor or the orchard floor in uh, autumn, the apple, but this is a, this is a clear definition of, now again, this is just my candle. Um, I, I haven't smelled these before. So what that means is I couldn't cross reference any of these candles with other candles on the shelves when I purchased these. Um, so maybe your smell's a little bit different. Maybe mine's a little off. Usually I try to pick the best one. See, there's coming up through a little bit. Okay, so um, it's just, it's a, a, to me, the definition of a, a, a low or a light. Let's use light because low, people don't like the word low. A light plus intensity candle on cold sniff. When you burn this, we may be very surprised if you have burned this candle, Cider House. What's been your experience of the intensity, not the throw, the intensity of the aromatics? And um, do you pick up on any other nuances that I, I didn't mention? But because of the lightness of this candle, I'm just getting a tree fruit, woodiness, dried grass, hay, uh, definitely some form of dried out 
wood as well. So, um, am I disappointed in this one? Uh, n not necessarily, but I mean, I think it's a. I think the candle is nice. Smells good. But when you call something cider house, the possibilities are endless. I may. I hopefully I'm not upsetting anybody because like I said maybe th this is just my candle um, but I've been hearing because I've been taking a little bit of a break from Yankee Candle not because there's I have any problems with Yankee Candle but sometimes you just need to take a break from things that you love and this means I haven't burned I haven't even smelled any of the spring summer fragrances for this year and this is my first time with the fall previews I haven't smelled the brunch i have them all i actually got the, most of them and i will evaluate them at some point but i needed a little bit of a break but everyone's saying that 2019 uh these yankee candles are on the higher intensity uh up next is and I'll check out the comments in just a little, se uh, just a second, just a little second. What was I talking about? Again, I think I need more coffee. Uh, golden chestnut. There we go. We got to get that focus on there. We have those sun bleached, uh, looks like patio floorboards with not roasted chestnuts, but just chestnuts. And what are they sitting in? Some kind of bowl. And I see some foliage up there so um, you think of chestnut you think of uh, roasting chestnuts by the fire have you ever roasted chestnuts I haven't done it personally but I've smelled roasted chestnuts okay so immediately uh, okay we're, we're we're at the intensity that I'm expecting um, medium plus intensity here which is what I like um, so uh, with a candle like this uh, I, I was gonna take my notes forget take, forget about taking the notes I'm not gonna sit here right in front of you uh, first thing uh, that's coming through to me are the baking spices so I try to isolate those smells and you don't I don't stick my nose in the candle for an incredibly long time what you do is you stick your nose, at least I do, when I stick my, when I stick my nose into the candle, I try to take that aromatic snapshot. Uh, because if you sit there with your nose in the jar, you're going to become desensitized to the smell. So right now, I have that snapshot, that photograph of the aromatics in my head, baking spices. And definitely the, the cinnamon, the spicier Saigon cinnamon, cinnamon stick, the clove is really coming through on this one but there is this roasted chestnut like thing uh, happening yeah okay so if this is a great Thanksgiving candle and I'll tell you why uh, I always grew up grew up with rutabaga you ever have a rutabaga I never had yams I never had sweet potatoes the marshmallows and the spices we never had that growing up but um, that is when I'm smelling. Um, there is this sweet potato puree, very savory, salty. We could say yams, yams, sweet potatoes. It's a long conversation, but let's keep it simple for now. Uh, so this savory Thanksgiving uh, yellow or orange dish that's been spiced up with that cinnamon and that nutmeg but when you're talking about chestnuts you you know you're you, you know you're thinking about the nuttiness I'm not getting so much of a nuttiness as I'm getting I would I, I, really if I was making notes I would focus more on descriptors that fall into the category of wood what kind of wood does this smell like you know what setting does this bring me to And honestly, now that I look at it, those those planks, those sun-kissed, sun-bleached planks, there is this washed up, beaten up, 
uh, rained on and uh, wood soaked aroma. It does kind of bring you outside. So what's interesting is that this is a, a, a delicious foodie kind of candle. You know, this is something, again, reminds me of Thanksgiving. But it brings you outside as well. Um, to me, when I evaluate a candle, it's always important that I try to figure out where this takes me, the setting of this candle, because it helps me visualize and paint the portrait of this candle. And when you have this contrast of being inside and outside, uh, uh, it's, it's always a, a pleasant experience. This one, I am... I am I'm excited about that one. That that's nice. I mean, a lot of folks might smell this quick, and this is not me being pretentious or anything. But if you smell this real quick, you'd be like, "Oh, okay, this just smells like any other kind of spiced up pumpkin, pumpkin spice, apple pie, uh, apple pie spice." See, now there is more of a nuttiness coming out in the milk cup. Again, this is going to be a much softer wax, a higher concentration of fragrance oils. I don't know how they make these things. But man, that's more intense. But it's the same profile, only I can smell the wax. That's the problem with soft wax. You can actually smell the wax more. Can't really smell par paraffin all that well. This one, I'm getting more, a little bit more of a spiced mold. There's no fruit, not mold, mold a, a cider. You know, honestly, I would love to hear what you guys think about this cider house. But here's a little trick I'm going to show you. If you ever want to do a little mixology, take both lids of the candle. I have Cider House and Golden Chestnut. Do a little Mr. Miyagi thing here, right? Now, there you go. I was hoping that that would be successful. I feel like you burn these together, then we that apple, uh, that Cider House really comes to life because this has the intensity and all of the other nuances and compliments that we need to uh, to really bring it to life. Cider House, man, that's the one I was really, really excited about. The Golden Chestnut, that is my pick so far. I usually don't give my opinion, but what the hey? How are you guys doing in the chat room down here? I see you all. Uh, after this, we're going to be going to my secondary channel, Aromatically Speaking, for an after show. How, how cool is that? We're going to evaluate these Yankee Candles, uh, wrap it all up, and then we're going to go to my secondary channel, do another live, and we're just going to gab away. Um, but just to isolate the evaluation of these candles, I figured we'd go on the main channel today. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. All right, organization is key here. Also, we're gonna do a Q&A. A lot of you guys asked uh, a bunch of questions. This is not for today, alfresco afternoon. Can you believe? I can't. I have not smelled these. It's been the first year in the longest time that I haven't smelled the Yankee Candles upon the release. I haven't even looked at this label. I've been looking at the Melt Cup label. Um, here we go. Let's switch back here. Da -ba -da. We have Farm Stand Festival. Oh, yeah. Lots of stuff happening on that label there. Um, see if we can get... How close can we get? Those looks, look like a Moscow mule mugs, copper mugs, you know, the hammered mugs. Um, I'll take a look and see what I see inside of the mugs in just a second. We have some kind of uh, collection of herbs. I believe they look huge. But herbs, a bowl. 
with some form of tree fruit. And then let me take a closer look here. We see flannel. I see a slice of cedar. I see, ooh, it looks like a picnic. A picnic with six servings of, uh, I'm guessing, it, it, maybe it's, it looks like apple cider in those mugs. I see apple slices. But this is a really nice label. Fla so it's like a picnic, right? We got the flannel, uh, the plaid, I should say, plaid, uh, picnic, blanket, and placemats. I'm liking the, these labels. I mean, I know there's the, the, the whole conversation. This is very poor of me. The whole conversation about Yankee Candle and their labels, and now they're changing every five seconds. There's a lot of information there. Definitely tells me a little bit of a story before going into this. Again, guys, I just want to say this. I have not read any of the... I don't even know if the fragrance notes are available, to be honest with you. Okay, so farm stand. Um... God, I say this every time I make a video. I grew up in an apple country. Farm stands everywhere. Every corner of every back road, there's a family farm. Crates of tree fruits. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, little markets where the fruit is freshly picked f for, for sale. You can pick them yourself off the tree. But they also have homemade pastries baked goods all of that jazz and i'll be honest with you it's immediately taking me um home it really is and i'll tell you why wow the milk cup so much more intense um not only do we have the apple uh, this is a macintosh apple this is more of like the honey crisp a honey crisp apple S you know sweeter a uh, little bit less of that floral fragrant macintosh apple skin definitely nothing like a super tart malic acid green apple but this is a really crisp we could say honey crisp we, we could say jonah gold apple uh, we could say Cortland apple we could say fuji apple we could say gala apple falls into that category good for eating good for baking well Cortland's really just good for baking but surprisingly at these farmers markets uh in apple country a lot of people don't know this uh stone fruit there's stone fruit so next to the apples next to the pears pears something i'm also getting in here that distinct pear skin um Stone fruit. What stone fruit? Peaches, apricots, nectarines, and plums. And really, there is uh, this peachy, peachiness to this. Uh, but I want to say nectarine. Uh, almost an underripe nectarine. Before it's way too sweet. Or not too sweet, but before it's really sweet and juicy. And when it's more firm and tart. The malic acid. Malic acid's what's in uh, stone fruit and tree fruit. It's different from citric acid. And wow, uh, there is a nuttiness here, uh, like a um, raw almonds, lemongrass. There is a lemongrass. Um, aroma here <sighs> which makes me want to say uh, what other kind of citrus there so uh, uh, wow so farm stand yeah so I mean I'm thinking New England here but this could be anywhere farm stand I'm getting uh, citrus too so we're dealing with citrus stone fruit <laughs> and tree fruit we're covering all of the bases here as far as types of fruit and that lemongrass just gives it that herbal, uh, even that a little bit of that, you know, whenever I describe uh, citronella or lemongrass, 
It's got a little bit of that bug repellent spray, not the alcoholish smell, not the propellant smell, but the actual nice components, uh, the, the essential oils or the fragrance oils that are inside. And let's go back to the candle. I'm looking for those herbs. Other than the lemongrass, I'm not getting anything like sage or basil, oregano, rosemary. Rosemary, because there is this fresh cut wood thing, um, like I say, like a pine tree, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and say rosemary. Why? Because rosemary smells like a citrusy pine, a savory citrusy pine. Um, one of my favorite herbs, but that is just a subtle nuance. Um, s baking spices? No, I, I don't get it. In the fragrance notes, I can't read your comments right now because I'm trying to plow through this. But I, I don't, I don't smell any um, baking spices. I mean, I would ex expect to maybe some. Um, star anise, allspice, definitely cinnamon. But this is more refreshing. This is more tart. This is this is drinkable. Meaning uh, if if this was a beverage and I smelled it, I'd want to drink it. Farm stand festival. Each one of these uh, well, we've done three so far. A little bit of a surprise. A little bit of a surprise. That's not a bad thing. What do we got? I think I'm done. You know what I have? I have this one. This is the one that wasn't released for the preview. And um, I just happened to come across this one. Check it out. Persimmon and brown sugar. This is a Canadian jar. That's why it has the, the French uh, name underneath it. Um, and persimmon, uh, native uh, to, to China and, and very, very popular. I think really the only place it's probably grown in the United States. Uh, it's a fruit. Um, persimmon, it's in California. To be honest with you, I had no idea what a persimmon was before I moved to California. And there's different kinds of persimmons. Uh, ones that are really like tannic, like grapes, and you have to like wait till they're super ripe before you can do anything with them. And then there's ones that are like mushed, very soft. Um, but one thing I can say for sure is I don't know what a persimmon would smell like. It's one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, if you smelled like a gooseberry or if you smelled a lychee or anything like that, they have a lot of flavor, but they don't necessarily have, in my mind, a strong aroma, the smell of a persimmon. Uh, so persimmon and brown sugar, I've been seeing persimmon pop up in fragrance notes of candles um, recently. Uh, Witch City Wicks Trick or Treat candle last year had persimmon in it. Wow. Wow. <sighs> okay. Wow. All right. So edited video I will be doing. Um, for sure, because there's no way. This is one that uh, I know I would spend a long time breaking this down. Because not just because there's so much going on, but I, they're, they're, it's setting off triggers of memory, things uh, from my past. And I want to try, have to search that Rolodex in my mind to try to pinpoint what that smells like. So I guess this smells like a what a persimmon would taste like, if that makes any sense, right? Um, although if you just smell a persimmon, you're not going to get much aroma. But it's a really uh, tart and sweet berry uh, aroma. Let's, I mentioned gooseberry. Let's actually go with it. So California Sauvignon Blanc a very popular descriptor on Sauvignon Blanc is gooseberry. What is a gooseberry? It's um, it's a part of the bramble family, and it's uh, it's at least in the Northeast, it's hard to find. 
and it goes by a different name, but it's really tart and it's really sweet. It's like um, a cross between a really flavorful grape and a cherry. And yeah, that's that. See, that's how I'm connecting the dots here. I mean, to me, when I smell this, I'm thinking of cherries, not black cherries. I'm thinking about really tart, underripe cherries, or or, or more of a tart variety of cherries, Bing cherries, not like black cherry, not like maraschino cherry, not like cherry pie filling. And uh, the other thing in this title is a brown sugar, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, it's just that it, that's exactly what it is. It's it's this kind of um, this spiced infused uh, brown sugar encrusted cake, coffee cake. Um, there's that uh, that molasses aroma that gives us the sweetness the robust nature uh, that's going to contrast the brightness the tartness of that fruit it's going to give us a whole other side to this candle yeah like a nice light brown sugar But I will say this is not overly savory. In fact, I might not call this savory at all. And I didn't. We didn't really analyze the label because it's so small. But I, I'm seeing a, a wooden tray, a pie, which I'm guessing is a persimmon pie um, with um, that brown sugar top um, on right there. There we go, and just persimmons all around there. Uh, and branching away from all of that, this just smells like candy. I mean, candy for days. And I'm not talking about old-fashioned kind of candies. I'm talking about the contemporary kind of candies. Or at least, i got to be careful when I say contemporary. I mean, contemporary when I was a kid. Uh, the, the tart, the, the, the sweet tarts, the, the now and later candies, the Skittles, the... Uh, Back back in the old days, penny candies just had you know sugar. Where you know at some point they started adding the citric acid, the malic acid powders, right, to give them more of the tart aroma. And to me, it's like I just took one of those movie theater bags, the plastic bags with the self serve penny candy, and I just loaded it up with runt runt candies. Oh yeah, runt candies. Uh, Obviously not the banana, uh, cherry, I don't remember the flavors, but runt candy is, and that, I'm not making fun of this candle. It's again, the nostalgia, the memories are helping me discover this candle. Other than the golden chestnut though, it's just different than what I would expect. I mean, you see a pie you see cooked down persimmons. You, spe you expect something buttery, you know, pastry, flaky, salty. Um, uh, just, you know, this warm, cozy, autumn indoor scent where this smells amazing. I hope that has been communicated, but it's just not what I was, what I would expect. To me, this is more refreshing because, again, of that sour tart nose. Uh, makes me kind of want to eat a persimmon um, or at least some kind of melons. Uh, maybe like can cantaloupe. Imagine cantaloupe and honeydew melon. Then you take uh, a, a lemon wedge, right? And you squeeze that lemon wedge on top of those cut up melon chunks and what what the hey throw in some of those sour cherries that to me it's a fruit salad maybe then dusted with that brown sugar a little bit of baking spice just a little bit of the the, the cinnamon sugar and that's it uh but no no pie no crust no savory no butter uh and i don't have this in any other format to cross reference but we're not done so we've done this one, we've done that one. 
we, we, we have four more, guys. We have four more. How are we doing? Are you guys hitting that thumbs up button? Um, uh, please hit that thumbs up button. We have 51 people watching at this time. And if you can hit that button, it really helps me out. Uh, let's break out, uh, just in case anyone's just joining, we are talking about all of the forthcoming uh, and already released uh, fall preview, autumn preview candles for 2019 by Yankee Candle. Sweet maple chai. Sweet maple chai. Can we get a focus, please? Sweet. Look at that label. Oh, man. I, I, I'm telling you, not only did I not smell these, I, I did not even look at the labels because I really wanted to save this for the camera. We have a mason jar filled with, you know, some kind of uh, a chai tea. It doesn't look like it would be served hot. It looks like this is like a, like a, a, a chai smoothie that's filled with, what is that, whipped cream and a caramel drizzle with a little bit of extra sauce and a, 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 a little serving ramekin on the side. Now that, that is different. And uh, if there's one way, may, I said caramel, but maybe, because maple is in the title, maybe it is a maple drizzle. Sweet maple chai. Wow, I might start smelling Mel Cups for Yankee. Um, honestly, I'm not kidding. Already, I have a bunch of stuff to say. Uh, maple syrup. Oh man, oh man. We all know. Maybe we don't all love the the the, the maple uh, fragrances by Yankee Candle. The Village exclusive New England maple. Um, but um, there. There's some of the maple ones out there that uh, aren't aren't too aggressive when it comes to the maple. And as soon as I stuck my nose into this this metal cup here, authentic maple syrup. And uh, I recently it's not recently it's been quite a while, but I I went to a, a big producer of uh, maple syrup crown maple syrup and I did an, an this this tasting where I tasted all of the different maple syrups that they had and I learned so much on that day because I learned what uh, is inherent in certain kinds of maple syrup uh, and you know when you do talk about the fake maple uh, syrup or maple candies what are other flavors are they adding to that to enhance the maple? I was surprised to see how some of the maple syrups actually smelled like butter. You think, when you think maple and butter, you think of pancakes, right? Because you put the butter on the pancakes. But the maple syrup itself smelled like the butter. So right off the bat, really dark, uh, robust maple syrup thinks that super thick viscosity viscous maple syrup dark molasses color and okay wood but i just got something else um and and oak um and I, I don't want to use oak as a descriptor because I know that there's oak in several of these titles coming up, but oak barrels, oak barrels. If you've smelled any kind of beverage that's been aged in an oak barrel, especially wine, when the barrel is new, that's obviously when it's going to be the most aromatic. This has that beautiful smell of of oak and i'll tell you what it's like you know second or third sniff there i felt like i just walked into a handcrafted wood furniture shop uh when i'm driving on these back roads in new england i i try to get off the you know i get off the highways i try to go out in the back roads and i try to find these 
off the beaten path places. And whenever I see a furniture shop, like handmade furniture shop, I stop off and look inside. And it's like I just walked into a shop that has tons of fresh wood. Now, don't confuse me. I'm not smelling lacquer. I'm not smelling urethane. I'm not smelling anything chemical. I'm smelling fresh cut wood furniture. Sanded wood, maybe a little bit of that sawdust. And in that shop, they're having breakfast. They are having breakfast somewhere because we got that maple syrup. Uh, we have that butter and pecan, baby. Pecan. We could say walnuts, but let's go with pecan. And, uh, and I say this from time to time, but don't, don't think it's about just the nut. Think about the shell um, um, with with pecan um, or, or with any kind of nuts. When you, you crack the shell um, of a walnut or a pecan or Brazil nut, whatever it might be, and you smelled inside the shell, you know there's there's a distinct aroma there um, that's a little bit different um, uh, than the creaminess, the sweetness of the nut in in inside or the seed. And cedar has to be in this, it has to be in the fragrance description because this is like fresh cut firewood. Um, I'm even getting a little bit of fireplace action. What is nuts is what does this have to do with chai beverage? <laughs> what is going on here? Um, Okay, yes, I'm getting some some spices, some freshly toasted spices, ground spices, that we would find in a, a, a chai tea or a chai beverage or a chai milkshake, whatever this may be. Are there nuts on top of there? There better be. Um, but you know, not the, not the, you know, some of the more exotics of the cardamom, uh, the coriander, the, the cracked black, uh, well, not cracked black pepper, but the the, the peppercorn are not getting uh, any of of the exotic spices, at least not in large doses. And here's a di 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 uh, difficult one uh, descriptor to talk about amber. Um, if you want to trip up the, the folks, uh, I'm not being pretentious here, but if you want to trip up the folks at, uh, let's say like Macy's department store, cologne or perfume, walk in, right? Walk in, go to the, to the place in the Macy's department store where they're selling the most expensive colognes and perfumes and look for the veteran, the veteran behind the counter, you know, the person that's been there for a long time and ask them to define two different popular, very popular uh, fragrance notes that are in everything from candles, perfumes, bath and body products. Amber, what is amber? Where, how is the fragrance oil extracted? What does it smell like? And what part, like amber what? Like, like the petrified resin, what, 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 is, what does amber smell like, and what is it, and why is it in everything? That and have them define. This is a really good one. Have them define the word musk, not must, not M U S T, uh, musk M U S K. Now they'll probably mention. Uh, muskrat, musk deer, uh, extrenal glands, but ask them, well then, how can florals, like how can a rose be musky? Uh, how can leather be musky? What is musk? What makes something a musk? Oh man, it, 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 it's fun. You can see them start to sweat bullets. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because this, there is, well, a long explanation, but there is what we would expect. I would expect something like amber to be in the fragrance notes here. I hope it is. 
uh, because there's that warm, soapy, floral, creamy, vanilla bean thing. You know, the, the bar of soap that is like that golden, translucent, transparent color, dialed golden soap. There's that really rich, warm, amber smell uh, in this candle or in this wax. But as far as, now again, this is the milk cup, to be fair. This is not the candle. I am not getting, uh, the, 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 the photograph is just not translating to me. Um, when I smell this, this smells like a beautiful parlor, a place. Um, sit by the fire, cedar wood, fireplace, wooden notes, some spices. But when I look at this label, I want to grab a straw and drink that chai milkshake. I want to order that at my local coffee house. Come on, focus. Okay. Um, but definitely um, putting aside the chai, definitely right on the mark with that maple. This is uh, up there with one of the better maple aromatic uh, Yankee Candle experiences uh, I've smelled. Um, I mean that. So definitely if maple is your thing and you're looking for authenticity, make sure you get to your local Yankee Candle and give that a sniff. Let's keep going. Are we all having a fun Sunday? Look at all these people. Look at all these faces. And uh, check this out. Um, quick um, shout out to Eric uh, for the $2 uh, Super Chat. Uh, man, it's been so long since I, I saw Super Chats. Thank you so much, Eric. Um, really appreciate that. The comment... I'll have to watch the video again and, and, and catch the reference. And wow, I haven't seen some of you guys in a long time. Thank you for joining in. I'm just looking at all your faces, but let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep having fun here. Are you having fun? Do we need music? We need more coffee in my life. Candle enthusiast mug, th mug three left out of 50 on eBay. Right there, first come, first serve. There's only three left, and I swear to you, I will not be making any more of those uh, Mary Tyler Moore inspired candle enthusiast mugs. Let me plug that a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A lot of the people in the chat room here have that candle. What is, what is going on here? I was just about to smell this. Oak Amber... So oak, I've already talked about amber. Um, I just spent a whole long time talking about. Uh, and well, oak amber and amber incense. Amber incense. Which makes sense because if amber, um, it, it would be a resin, right? Maybe there is. Maybe there is uh, amber that you can buy and it's resin form that's not petrified does anybody know at least if i can't read the comments list it for the other folks i cannot get this straight look at this look at this look at this how bad is that because i'm looking at a mirrored image we definitely see forest floor action there this is almost reminding me of what is the name of that candle it was uh, released in the uk Autumn Glow, I believe. And I can't see the full label because this is just the melt cup. But oak, amber, oak and amber incense. Amber incense. It's not oak and amber and incense. Amber incense. Wow. Want. Let's 
go back to that chai real quick. Definitely fireplace here. Man, you know, if all of these are just bad pours, I'm gonna look like a moron. But this is sharing so many similarities with that last one. Um, oak, again, but much more aggressively. It's the same exact oak note, only there's more of a nuttiness here. Um, uh, and again, it's like, I hate when I repeat myself. I hate when I repeat myself with the descriptors. But again, it's not that creamy almond. Um, it's not a roasted nut. It is, it's like you're sticking your nose into that big bowl of mixed nuts um, at Christmas time. I think it's Christmas time or the holiday season, right? When people have the the mixed nuts in the wooden bowl. And speaking of the wooden bowl, that wooden bowl is made of oak. And it's uh, unfinished, maybe, because this has that raw timber smell. It's a fresh wood aroma. And any of you guys, uh, and when I say guys, I mean everybody. I don't mean just the boys, but if you spent uh, time uh if you spend time in the shop uh sanding wood or, or uh, fixing up furniture or let's say back in high school you had shop class um and you have a, a belt sander and you're sanding down trying to rip off the the paint or the, the finish of an old piece of furniture or just sanding down the edges of a fresh piece of wood that sawdust wear wear a mask but that sawdust that floats in the air really really nice so I would say just as much cedar as oak to uh, the nuttiness, incense, oh, 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 and the amber, like the last candle, completely. Um, I guess, what else can I elaborate on, on amber? Amber, so the, the, if that person at Macy's behind the counter comes out and says, uh, well, when we say amber as in this cologne or perfume, it's really uh, a fragrance oil or an essential oil that's made with labdomum. Labdomum is a flower. That, that would be quite impressive, um, I, I think, um, if they can p pull that out. But usually, uh, especially with um, you know, inexpensive products uh, like Bath and Body products you buy at the grocery store anything that smells like amber it's really um, it's it's this floral that has that warm soapy smell and I do not smell there's a resin okay so r resinous I'm gonna go out and say, I'm gonna say sandalwood. I'm not gonna say incense. So like, I'm not gonna say frankincense. I'm not gonna say myrrh. I'm gonna say uh, san like a sandalwood accord, fresh treated, not fresh treated, fresh cut timber. Uh, I've said that several times already. Uh, this is why I edit, um, but uh, that, 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 that fresh wood, uh, what, was I, what was I gonna say? Oh, 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 okay, okay, all right. The sandalwood, because of um, cologne. This has, this isn't a modern day uh, contemporary bachelor, young, young gentleman kind of cologne. You know, today uh, the popular colognes are different than the old days. This, this is, a, this is like dad or grandpa. This has uh, that smell. It's, it's what I affectionately call as grandpa's closet, right? It has that smell of when you open up and you smell all of the flannel shirts in there. 
um, um, but you're also smelling a little bit of that uh, mustiness of uh, the old wooden armoire or, or uh, just the old New England house. Oh, 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 and Grandpa, Grandpa is sitting on a rocking chair um, by the fire, but the fire isn't rip-roaring. What is he doing? He's cleaning out his pipe, his, his, uh, his pipe, right? I don't smell the sweet raisin-like, cherry-like pipe tobacco. No, uh, I smell the wooden um, uh, quality of that pipe and the expired tobacco I'm a little hesitant to see ashes because that provokes a smoke. But oh yeah, yeah. Um, if you've ever, you know, cleaned, uh, you know, uh, a tobacco pipe, tobacco pipe, cleaned it out, you know, get the wire, not the wire brush, yeah, wire, wire brush, pipe cleaner, scrub that out, and he smelled that beautiful, that bowl of that pipe, bingo, bingo little bit of that residual tobacco in there oh thank god and that brings me to this i can't believe i almost missed this okay so from that pipe now my mind has brought me to something that this is definitely reminding me of something i haven't done in a long time uh, when i turned 18 i thought it'd be super cool what did i do i wanted to me and my buddy were like we're gonna go buy really, really, really expensive cigars and become cigar aficionado. So we go out and we buy $4 cigars and we think that uh, we're, we're hot stuff. And uh, what we would do is we would go to all of these really fancy cigar shops with the walk-in humidors. Now, there's two, there's many different aromas going on in a humidor, those, those, those humidified um, uh, cedar walled rooms that's airtight very moist you smell the sweet tobacco to me tobacco you know it has that vanilla the the cherry the cola smell um, um, uh, the, the the raisin golden raisin smell but don't don't let that fool you it's it's more of the cigar box a quality cigar box is made out of, I, I'm pretty sure, cedar, and um, and that this is definitely bringing me back to those those days. This and 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 and, and one more thing, uh, and I can't believe uh, I, again I almost forgot this. Um, I'm trying to put these in in the best order as I can. But all of those indoor things, and what we're seeing here is an outdoor label, right? The, the, the foliage. If you uh, have a pile of leaves, a pile of pine needles, a pile of grass um, in your yard somewhere that's been sitting there for a very long time. Um, and my dad's property, you know, he out in the back, he just had big mounds of branches and pine needles god knows what but i'm telling you you go into those piles be careful the snakes and the bees but you go into those piles and you sm smell that dried that dried vegetation uh whether it be like i said the leaves usually is pine needles and grass and a little bit of the soil uh i'm not saying that's precisely what this smells like but it's making me it's making me go there and that is the beauty of aroma and the mixology of making candles. When you're smelling something that's not there, but the sum of all of its parts is bringing you to that very uh, specific thing. And a um, lot of heartwarming images here. I said grandpa, grandpa's closet, tobacco, uh, the, the cigars and uh, the, 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 the wonderful outdoor smells of dried leaves and pine needles with all of the other things that I mentioned. 
I don't know if you can tell, but this is easily, um, I think for me, the most up my alley. Um, uh, but I think this is most, in my opinion, in my opinion, uh, I because this this definitely won't be everyone's cup of tea. But I think this is probably the best executed candle. Again, this is the Mel Cup, so you know, to be perfectly fair, I need to smell the candle and burn the candle. But this is the best executed candle for me personally. It's just an opinion, folks. This one moved me emotionally, and um, I feel like is very complex. All right. Let's keep this going. Dried lavender and oak. All right, uh, lavender. Lavender is sneaking into almost every season um, nowadays, except for winter, um, and maybe even some winter. I think we had some lavender this year. I think what was it? A um, couple of holiday shimmer last year. I don't know if I had lavender, but it, it was in that kind of ballpark. Had the those clean floral aromas. Point is, a lot of people say they really don't like lavender, but just lavender is everything now. It's in everything, you know. Every how many people despise this candle right here? Um, the lemon lavender classic. Yeah, but I can understand. That's very soapy, very furniture polish. That candle, I like it, but I can understand why people don't like this. But let's see what's going on here. Dried lavender. Uh, one of my favorite things uh, to 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 you know use in mixology, making cocktails, and uh, oak, oak again, the wood that is neglected all of the time in candles, at least in the fragrance notes, and it seems like oak is in everything so far today. I'm telling you, we're going to get through all of these, and I'm going to say every single one, except for the golden chestnut, is they're just completely different than what I would expect. So, yeah, dried lavender, absolutely, beautiful dried lavender, and... It just so happens I have this honey lavender gelato. It's been there forever. I only burn it during the, these live videos. Um, it doesn't smell necessarily like that, but what, what I'm trying to say is this is a refreshing lavender. How is lavender refreshing? Well, it's not just lavender. It's got citrus. It has citrus. You know, I, it's got a little bit of a clone, uh, clean, soapy thing. I want to go with bergamot, but really, to me, it's just, it's all about the lime zest here. Um, lime zest all of the way, a little bit of the lime juice. Imagine a limeade infused with dried lavender. And then take that concept and not make a gelato out of it but you make a sorbet out of it when you smell this at least when i do uh and speaking of gelato and sorbet it does have a little bit of a milky dairy quality to it before i forget to say it i want to point that out but this smells like dessert time this smells like a hot summer day and I need a refreshing beverage. And the oak in this, if there is oak in this, it's not like the oak in the other candles. You know, it, to me, it, the woodiness here, I don't feel like there's that much, but what, the, what there is of that woodiness just kind of naturally goes along with the aroma profile of 
the lavender, right? You know, the lavender, the, the, blo the flowers, the blossoms on, on the branches. I don't know. Yeah, lime, lime, lavender, definitely honey. If someone wanted to say um, 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 green tea or, or chamomile tea, God, I like chamomile. Yeah, chamomile tea. Um, I I wouldn't be afraid to go there, but again, an iced tea because it just again seems refreshing. Maybe my nose is different than yours. I'm sure it is. All of our noses are different. A little bit of that country laundry room, which, again, is just because of the lavender. There's probably a little bit of a combination of florals going on in here, but it's not reminding me of any kind of specific uh, fabric softener or anything like that. And it's definitely not that clean floral, or it's not. it doesn't lean that direction. This is what I need to write down. Milky vanilla. That's it. Vanilla bean. Uh, that's what I wanted to say because I was thinking of soft serve, not vanilla bean. Uh, let's go with soft serve vanilla ice cream. Summertime, you know, you get the vanilla swirly on the cone, the really creamy vanilla surf, soft serve ice cream. The lavender, as this is uh, registering a little bit, the lavender, I'm smelling these way too much, by the way. Uh, I don't need to stick my nose in there that much, but the lavender is coming off a little bit more spicy. So maybe when you burn this, and if it is, you know, it is kind of cool in this room right now. Um, maybe this is not necessarily, a f it won't register for you definitively as a frozen dessert. It just does for me. Uh, but definitely, Dried lavender and oak, not what I would expect, but it's not completely wrong. See what I'm saying? All the candles kind of with the names and the portraits, they work, but there's a disconnect somewhere. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I have to think about it. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's uh, you know an element of surprise or it adds to an element of surprise. Last, I can't say but not least because I don't know. Um, uh, this is another one of those that wasn't a part of the fall preview. Pumpkin apple parfait. And um, what do we, what did we have? The pumpkin pumpkin trifle luscious pumpkin trifle last year um you know uh same same kind of thing that that was a little bit more of a luxury look where this does have more of that farm stand country home uh rustic look um compared to the really glamorous labels of last year they just some of them looked you know, um, you know, Yankee Candle is supposed to, you know, kind of evoke not necessarily just New England, but, you know, the country, you know, Americana. Oh, yeah. Well, I like, I do. I usually don't share my opinions. I like this better than Luscious Pumpkin Trifle. Um, big apple. Where was the apple on that apple or that cider house? I have to get another cider house candle. Do I not have it in a melt cup? How could I not have it in a melt cup? I don't. But anyway, this is the apple. This is the apple I was waiting for uh, big time. Um, 
and again, all of our, uh, our all of our memories are attached to aromas. They really are. You know, um, I truly believe that the way uh, our memories are helped stored in our brains and how we recall uh, memories. If anyone's a Marcel Proust, remembrance of things past or in search of long time, maybe you'll know what I'm talking about here, but how uh, aroma helps us retrieve memories from our past. Um, and um, when I smell this candle right away, it's it just brought me to Starbucks. Starbucks, um, college years, maybe even before that, before I was a... a a big coffee drinker. Um, one of my favorite seasonal drinks, I think they still have it, is the hot caramel apple cider. It's uh, the apple cider. It's kind of a half apple cider, half apple juice, served hot, caramel sauce, whipped cream, God knows what else. And I'm smelling that sweet, salty, caramel drizzle on that more of an apple juice instead of an apple cider aroma Re and, 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 and maybe even fresher than apple juice like fresh squeezed apple juice that it's not like Mott's apple juice a little bit more and this has a Granny Smith very very distinct green apple Granny Smith May, if we want to say golden delicious apple, we can go there, but a very distinct non-red delicious apple, non-Macintosh apple aroma. This smells like forbidden apple, the Halloween candle, with the caramel, with the spices. What kind of spices? I think our usual suspects, we have our pumpkin apple pie combination, cinnamon, nutmeg, all spices coming through a little bit. A little bit of a pastry butter. I think that's a part of the buttery, buttery, salty, but a little bit of a pastry thing coming through. I'll say whipped cream. It's parfait, right? Yeah. Brown sugar, that coffee cake crumble. What's well, that's on the picture. It looks like that's on the picture. Yeah. This is nice. Um, okay, so to break this down, typical, typical autumn fragrance notes. Apple, apple pie spice, pumpkin pie spice. Speaking of which, it does kind of remind me of the Starbucks pumpkin spice latte. Minus the... Well... I don't want to say minus the coffee because I think all of these candles, this candle not excluding, um, has there's a nuttiness, um, and so a medium roasted coffee or medium plus roasted coffee will have those distinct uh, nutty notes. Again, I apologize for the repetition of the descriptors today, but uh, it is what it is. But um, it's it, you know the, the spices the, the the apples the caramel the nuttiness the um, uh, anything else that we said um, apple cider um, all of the usual suspects as fragrance notes. However, what makes me excited about this candle? Balance, balance. Please um, use these words: um, balance, complement, contrast. Um, um, uh, bridging if if something uh, there's two components in a candle that smell similar that help bridge each other these are much better words than um, too strong or 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 or, 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 or uh, low throw or, or even what I say a lot low intensity it really intensity uh, is not to me as important as a balanced candle. Um, I have a feeling, I, I haven't smelled this in candle form, but I have a feeling if, if the candle smells anything like this melt cup, this isn't going to be a super powerful 
intense candle, but, and if that's what you're looking for, it's not what I'm looking for, but if that's not what you're looking for, know that the experience is going to be really complex. You're going to experience all of these nuances. And you'll be walking around your house and you'll get a little bit of the caramel and you walk over here and you get a little bit of the spices. This is the kind of candle that the ingredients are in check where something like the sugared, the cinnamon sugared apple last year, to me, you know, um, you know, people love candles like that, but there's just too many like that because the bake, the cinnamon specifically, the baking spices were just too high. It was just, it was masking all of the other aromas in the candle. So you have to balance and, uh, and um, you're probably wondering, am I smelling pumpkin? Yeah, maybe we could say pumpkin puree. Uh, I, I mean, I I didn't mean to like roll my eyes there. I think that, that that's there, but really the pumpkin in this name is I think more in reference to the pumpkin spice, but apple, apple for days, um, any clove? No, I don't think so. Uh, watch, it's in the fragrance notes. Pumpkin apple parfait. Uh, so let me just show you all of the candles that we've uh, talked about today. Uh, and if you missed any of this video, you can go back. Uh, this will be uploaded later on, so you can watch from beginning to end. Pumpkin Apple Parfait, which is, uh, to my knowledge, not released yet. Uh, Farm Stand Festival. Um, yeah, a, a really... A, interesting combination of different fruit notes in there uh if you remember we said tree fruit citrus fruit stone fruit um i think the one that probably won't be purchased that much and it's sad because i i think this is really nice this is a really nice thanksgiving candle thanksgiving candle is what i call autumn phase three and I see, hold on, I see a super chat. Jeremy Weingard, Jeremy with a $10 super chat. Jeremy, thank you so much. Uh, truly, truly means the world to me. I know I use phrases like that all of the time, but know uh, that uh, it's coming from the most sincere, the, the most sincerest place of my heart, the most sincere place, most sincere place of my, I'll go with that. Uh, it, it, that that is true. Every little bit helps, um, especially with all of the videos coming up. So golden chestnut. Um, maybe I will rank these. Should I rank these? Like rate them? My personal favorites. Uh, uh, we had this was this one was very well uh, executed um, and um, in balance, definitely the uh, balance, but really it's just jam packed with so many different aromatic experiences. Let me turn the volume down just a little bit. I feel like the audio might be peaking. Um, I recommend that one. I am going to put these in order. Sweet maple chai. Oh, God. And where is it? Hit the focus. Persimmon brown sugar. Um, did I show all of them? Let me just do this. Oh, and the Cider House. Cider House rules. Um, I'm going to have to get another one of these. I have a feeling this can't... Let's, uh, let me take a quick sniff of it now, and then I'm going to tell you my favorite... Wow. Um, okay. 
you know, usually at the end of a long, uh, uh, it's not a wine tasting, um, after a flight of candles, my nose is fatigued. But I did hit this with heat. This was the one, look, it's actually still a little bit melted. And this is why I'm gonna to have to make an edited video because people are gonna be probably so angry for me for putting this down. But a little bit of that cider, now not just apple, but a little bit of that cider is coming through. as well as some other fruit notes, like red fruit notes, like raspberry, red currant, strawberry. Interesting. Um, so let's do this. Favorite is going to be, uh, number one is going to be oak and amber incense, um, followed pumpkin apple parfait really because of the balance of this candle um, let me make sure that i'm getting this right golden chestnut coming in at number three farm stand festival um i want to spend more time with that one i feel like there's more to discover in there um, and then we have these four left. Uh, I'll go with the persimmon brown sugar coming in at number five. Number six. Um, although it's just so, I think the picture and the fragrance is so disjointed. Um, you see what happens too when I do this without editing? A little bit more of uh, uh, <laughs> a little bit more unfiltered, uh, a little bit more just sharing my opinion. But I just, I just feel like this is way too similar to that, and for no good reason. Um, that oak amber incense, um, and it's just so disjointed from the picture. But it's a great scent, so. Uh, what do you say? Um, and then I feel like I'm gonna come around. I feel like I feel like I'm gonna come around to this cider house. I'm gonna say the cider house candle, and then last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and in eighth place. Although a very, very refreshing, pretty scent. Um, dried lavender and oak. It's just, um, uh, just, you know, uh, a little bit, a little bit, um, recycled for me. And again, just, I think with all of these candles, a little bit disjointed from the labels, but come on, what are the chances eight for eight that all of these candles don't really give you what you would would expect by the name and uh the the label is it a coincidence is it just me um or is it um is that the approach uh for yankee candle this this year to give you a little bit of when you smell the candle whoa that wasn't what i was expecting that's not necessarily a bad thing it is if you're purchasing online and you don't have a yankee candle store um but um online hopefully the fragrance notes help you help you if i have the fragrance notes if i find the fragrance notes i will list them in this video i'm probably after smelling these now will do an ed edited video uh because i definitely want to spend more time with these um and uh leslie pethy bridge my dear friend uh thank you so much 20 dollar super chat uh, I finally can give you some much needed love and support for what you do. Uh, Leslie uh, means, again, means the world. Uh, I gotta come up with new things. Uh, it's more of the feeling that I want to share. Thank you so much. Uh, this is why um, I would love to see the second channel, aromatic, aromatically speaking, 
if we can get to that threshold where we can have super chats and monetization, uh, all of all of this money, it doesn't go into, you know, me buying dinner tonight, going out and buying food, or 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 buying a brand new pair of shoes. All of this money, um, I mean, now that I'm on hiatus, um, not a lot of stuff on eBay. There's some stuff on eBay now, um, but. Um, you know, uh, I'm not raising a lot of money for the upcoming videos, um, but when we get back into the full swing of things, uh, all of the money doesn't go into necessarily candles like this. I don't want you to think that the money goes to the candles. The money uh, that's um, contributed, I call it fueling the flame, um, goes into uh, the travel shows. Um, the travel shows, things like... Um, uh, cheap motel rooms so I can travel and, and document different places that I want to explore and although I've been on an extremely long break I cannot wait to jump right back into it and anyway you can support you don't have to just watching you're supporting uh, my efforts but anyway you can support uh, whether it be five cents or uh, we had uh, Leslie with the $20 super chat. Always super helpful. I think I might do this. I might start doing a few more lives on the main channel. What's gonna be important at this juncture is you hit that thumbs up button. Hit that thumbs up button and, uh, and uh, I think we're gonna do an after show. I'm gonna switch over to my second channel. Second channel. This is the main channel, the Candle Enthusiast, second channel, aromatically speaking. So give me a couple minutes. I'll meet you over there if you want to join. I got a bunch of stuff here on the table. Uh, a little bit of Yankee Candle archives. We're going to do a very old Yankee Candle, like a, a Yankee Candle that's like 30 years old, and compare the same scent of a candle that was poured a couple months ago compare the sense. Uh, we're gonna do some fun things like that, some show and tell. I have some mail unboxing. I have other Yankee Candle goodies. And uh, for those of you uh, joining in today for Just This Live, thank you so much. Uh, I will be talking to you soon. Leave some comments, leave some comments in, uh, down below. I will be talking to you soon, but until then, be good. And thank you everyone for joining me on this Sunday. Have a good one, guys. Uncomfortable moment when I try to figure out how to end the live stream. Here it comes. Ending the live stream.